Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to Serenium India. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, and uh, my session today uh, is going to be actually related to the previous session, talking about innovation, what's new, what's coming uh, in web, in web development, in web, web technology. Uh, I'm going to address progressive web application testing strategies. Uh, and this is what uh, is happening these days in the market. There is a uh, serious transformation by major enterprises, and I will show you some demos, uh, that are switching from traditional web applications, websites, mobile websites, responsive websites, towards progressive web applications. And there are reasons why they are doing so. And I will cover the reasons, and I will cover at least my agenda on if I am in your seats, I, I will build a test plan for progressive web application. Just a, a brief uh, word about myself. My name is Aran Kinsbrunner. I'm a director and evangelist at Perfecto. Perfecto is a cloud company uh, providing infrastructure for testing web and mobile native applications in the cloud in different locations. Uh, I'm there for the last uh, more than six years, actually. Uh, before that, I worked at Sun Microsystems on the Java to Micro Edition uh, SDK. Um, I'm the author of the Digital Quality Handbook and working on a second book that uh, is about to launch later this year. Uh, I'm actually sharing and collaborating uh, with a few guys that are in the, in, the, in the room right now on the second book, so uh, stay tuned. Um, in today's uh, session, I'm going to talk about the DevOps transformation, what leads towards the adoption of progressive web application. I'm going to talk about what is a progressive web. Not many people uh, are looking into, what, into this technology and uh, are not really familiar with what is progressive web, so I'll try to uh, guide you and arm you with what, is, what it takes to actually move from one web application to a progressive advanced application. Uh, and uh, if there are time for questions uh, after the test strategy, uh, definition. I will be happy to take questions. I'm here uh, all day, so if you don't catch me during the session, you can catch me after the session. Uh, just one uh, word about the image, what you're seeing. This is the Guardian website in the UK. It's built as a progressive web application, and as a teaser, progressive supports offline caching, meaning if you have zero network connectivity, uh, by uh, uh, the implementation of progressive web application, you can actually still get content and engage with the website. Uh, and uh, when the, the Guardian is offline, the attendees or the, 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 the users of this website can actually do some uh, puzzle and crosswords. So uh, that's one way of engaging with the user even when you, are, we have, you have either zero network or slow network connectivity, uh, and it's part of the implementation. So past versus the future. How many here are doing web testing on a responsive web application today? Let's try Almost everyone, okay? It's not the past, it's the future, actually. But um, it's the current. The, the future of responsive is progressive, okay? So uh, progressive web, if you want to think about what's really the future, it's a responsive plus one. It's, a, it's, it's an advanced responsive website, web application, which has much more uh, capabilities that are bringing the web closer to a mobile native application uh, user experience and capability. And I will tell you and show you how it looks like. Today, there is a huge gap, but it's closing between mobile native applications and web applications. It comes, it starts with sensors that the mobile devices have and the web uh, doesn't or has limit, limitations uh, in engaging with sensors. Uh, it comes to different network conditions that the mobile devices work with, 3G, 4G, these kind of things, uh, different carriers uh, compared to the website. And there are many others. There are uh, sensors like Face ID uh, and fingerprint that you have on the mobile and you don't have uh, right now on the web. This bridge or this gap uh, is getting closed uh, by the browser vendors. We see both Chrome as the early adapters as well as Firefox and Microsoft Edge Safari from iOS 11.3 also supports progressive. So most of the browsers are, st browsers are starting to close the gaps in uh, uh, bringing the mobile capabilities into the desktop web. And we see today, you know, if you go to google.com, which is a progressive web, you see the icon of the microphone, right? You can actually inject voice to uh, Google uh, from your desktop, not from your mobile. 
You can do the same thing with locations and some push notifications today with different de desktop browsers, right? You get this allow and block uh, all the time in your desktop browser. So there are already uh, capabilities today in the desktop web that are close to mobile, but it's still not complete. And uh, the browser vendors from both Microsoft, again, Mozilla, and uh, Apple are starting to close these gaps with moving towards progressive. I don't know how much you can see back there, but that's a, a nice website. I don't think that everything that it's in here is fully accurate, but it's kind of showing you the differences between different browsers uh, and how they support different capabilities. So uh, uh, if you look at uh, the left hand, this is the Chrome on, on this Windows 10 machine, on this Windows 10 Surface. On the right hand, it's the Edge, Edge, Microsoft Edge 17 on the exact same machine. You can see that, uh, you know, uh, there are some red marks here, which are green here, you know. I can give you, uh, I can read it for you guys. So uh, home screen installation is not supported on the Edge 17, uh, but, it's, uh, but it is supported on the Chrome on this Windows machine. And I'm not even taking it to the mobile devices. So even on desktop, desktop uh, machines, the browsers today without responsive and progressive technologies vary between the different capabilities. And from a testing perspective, you need to be aware of these capabilities. There is a website called What uh, My Web Can Support Today. I have it in the, uh, I have the, the URL uh, in this uh, presentation. You will get it. You can just go to, to a website and see what's, what is supported from an API standpoint and how you can engage with the web from your application as well. So let's dive into you know, mobile native versus progressive web, okay? Today, when you are developing a native mobile application, you need experienced teams, right? For iOS, you need uh, guys who are strong at Swift, Swift code development. With Android, you need Java developers, right? And uh, for web, you need Java and JavaScript uh, skill set within your team, okay? So these are varying uh, skill set and also varying technologies. We know that for native mobile application, as uh, in the keynote, Appium is the de facto. Selenium is the de facto for web, but you also, ha you you also have XCUI test and you have Espresso, right? You have different frameworks, different skill sets, different technologies that support different native mobile applications. And oh, by the way, once you develop the native application, you need to also deploy it into the App Store, right? To Google Play and to the Apple App Store. And it's a process. And if you are thinking about DevOps, Agile, continuous deployment, going all, all the way through the uh, App Store after fixing a bug and you know, waiting for the, uh, the approvals and all this process, sometimes takes time and you want to be much more agile. Progressive, uh, in, in a sense, comes to kind of bypass the App Store with permissions, of course, from Google and Apple. It's not something that is a hack. Apple and Google are supporting Progressive as part of their browsers, but it's something that doesn't go through the App Store and as only one uh, source code uh, from a skill set perspective, both from testing and development. So that's a huge uh, advantage for developing progressive web compared to a native app. Still, there is maturity, and I will talk about the differences, but from a mindset and from a thinking forward, organizations like eBay, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram are already implementing today. That it's in, in the market today, if you go today, uh, to Instagram.com or to Pinterest.com, uh, Flipboard.com, you name it, you know, and you add a shortcut from your smartphone, Android or iOS 11.3 and above, to your smartphone home screen, you get a progressive web installed on your app without going through the App Store, okay? You have kind of a native app running on your smartphone devices without installation through App Store, uh, you know, all this uh, certification that you need to go, UDID, you know the, the mess with signing application and these kind of things. So let's be a bit more educated about what is a progressive web. So basically, if you go to Wikipedia, it will <coughs> say a lot of words. I will summarize it for you. Progressive kind of brings web and mobile together, okay? It bridges the responsiveness uh, of the web, web application, what you know from responsive web, and most of you are doing responsive web today. So responsive web means you have consistent user experience across all different platforms, mobile and web. Progressive, on top of that, brings also advanced capabilities. I will name a few. Offline caching, 
push notifications, walking with sensors, camera, location, uh, audio, the microphone of, of the device. So if you want to inject, like walk with Siri or inject a voice, record a memo from a progressive web application, it is supported today. Doesn't work well on iOS, works better on Android for my research, for my initial re research, but Apple is catching up uh, with progressive web capabilities as part of Safari, okay? But still, these are the, in, in a nutshell, this is what a progressive web application means, okay? Responsive plus advanced capabilities. This is a long list of benefits that progressive web application actually guarantees or promises uh, the developers of such applications. And uh, I mentioned the offline caching, right? You can work with almost zero network or with no network at all through, due to this uh, offline caching. You can uh, register your progressive application to get push notifications. Imagine twitter.com today, everyone is tweeting from Selenium Conference. Twitter is a progressive web application today. Uh, if you install progressive on your iOS device today, you will get for, uh, Twitter Lite, that's the name, okay? And it can register to get push notifications when someone is tweeting, like any native Twitter mobile application that you are familiar with. Uh, it's responsive, I told you, it's a superset of, of, of responsive progressive, so it works on all the devices. I found some bugs, I will share with you some of the bugs, but it, it's, it's supposed to be a responsive uh, kind of application. If you look at what the uh, organizations that already are early adopters of Progressive, uh, what are, they are saying about their motivation to move to Progressive, 80% marked caching offline or offline caching as the top uh, reason to move to this implementation. eBay is among the early adopters of Progressive web application, and I will explain why. Add to home screen, it's another feature, okay? Heading this shortcut to your smartphone, adding like a link uh, of a native app from the browser to your smartphone, it's a huge advantage and it's a very usable uh, thing. And I will tell you uh, also soon why. Think about storage, size of the application, response time, uh, and uh, all of these uh, performance related capabilities. But that's a teaser. Uh, push notification also, quite a lot of people like this ability to get push notification from a web application on their smartphones, on, on their mobile devices like they get, they get with native apps. I want to read everything here. Uh, this is just, and if you go to PWA Stats today, and it's getting updated all the time, pwastats.com is an aggregation of case studies for organizations who already adopted progressive web and what they see uh, as a return on investment from doing so. Uh, as an example, uh, I can read uh, Best Western River North Hotel sees 300% increase in revenue with new progressive web application. Okay? This is just one example. There are plenty of uh, more examples. If you want to try a progressive, I mentioned just a few Twitter, okay, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, you can go to a website called pwarocks.com. It's being updated, Flipboard. All these websites are adding more and more samples of progressive websites. Google built an entire agenda about progressive with full set of documentation, code samples, test cases that you can start using and learn about that. But still, the testing is at the heart of this session. Testing of progressive isn't easy. It's very challenging, uh, and I will explain soon why. Um, I don't know, before I go to this slide, how many guys in the audience right now are looking at Progressive or learning about Progressive? Okay, much less than the ones that are doing responsive. So um, uh, from a recent survey that I did uh, during a, a webinar a few weeks ago actually, 32% uh, of the attendees, and there were about 2,000 attendees, uh, were saying that they are looking today into Progressive Web. I met last month with Liberty Mutual in the US, huge bank, huge uh, uh, insurance company, and they are already uh, investigating what it, uh, does progressive web application mean to them, okay? What are the benefits and whether should uh, they move from responsive, which they have today, to progressive, okay? Tinder, everyone who is dating, I'm married happily, I'm not dating, but everyone who is dating must know about Tinder. Uh, and Tinder seen uh, in Android 
look, look at the comparison of the native app versus the progressive with almost the same set of features and capabilities. their websites and cannot accomplish it because they are losing network. So in their implementation with offline caching that is being done at any given point, when the, ne the network connection is dropping due to service workers, and I will explain what is a service worker soon. Service worker, I'm back. Uh, service worker enables the application to store data and it's different between an iOS and Android. I will also show you what the difference is. Uh, so you can continue the journey up until adding to the cart. You cannot obviously do the payment uh, without the network, but you can accomplish adding an uh, item to the cart on eBay, even without network in their progressive web application. Once you get back online, you can complete, complete the transaction. Okay? And that's for them a huge advantage of moving to uh, progressive web. That's a sample of Instagram. Instagram. Facebook, everyone is using that. Uh, you cannot see probably the small text, but that's, uh, that's the mark of last device in for time. So uh, for my mobile device, when I'm online, it always like do some polling and offline caching uh, up until I'm offline, if you like. And uh, based on that, it can always preserve the state, preserve the session that I'm using on, on my mobile app, on the Android or iOS uh, progressive on my device. And what you're seeing here, and I will show you from a, a web browser so you can see it better. If I go to, to, uh, to currently to flibo.com, flibo.com and use a website, that's a progressive web, okay? Everyone knows the Chrome tools. It's by the way supported on Edge and Mozilla as well. Uh, for Chrome, everyone knows the inspect. When I go to the inspect tool, you will see that there is a special tab called application. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. What's relevant for you in the application tab uh, in regards to progressive are two things. One is the, the manifest, okay? Manifest, like in an Android APK, you have a manifest file. In iOS, you have an info.p list, which kind of describes the application. That's the descriptor of the progressive web application. It will identify the background theme, the colors, the, the launch URL, okay? How you want when someone is adding the shortcut to his device, launching the progressive web, which uh, website, which page is going to see uh, the, first, uh, the first time he's doing that. Icons, uh, whether it's opening uh, as a full browser or, or, the, or as a standalone application. Uh, landscape versus portrait. You can define a lot of things in the manifest file uh, depending on your implementation. Uh, you can test add to home screen right from the Chrome uh, tool as well. Okay. So think about that, it's just a descriptor. If you have a responsive web today and you work with your, de your developers, your developers need to know two, th two things. One, they need to develop a, a manifest.json, a JSON file, which define the, the progressive web application. And the most important thing, they need to develop separate JavaScript code for the service workers, okay? Service workers, you can also see them in the application. It's a JavaScript code, and this is what that, this is the core of the progressive web implementation. This is what takes care of offline caching, registering for uh, push notification, working with uh, all kinds of events that are happening in the device, like uh, sensors, activities, and many more. This is a part of your implementation of your website and it needs to be maintained. This is why if you are switching from responsive to progressive, manifest service workers, this will be your first steps to develop, to implement on top of your website. And you have tools like uh, you know, Google Chrome inspect tools and uh, the Edge tools as well for Microsoft that will allow you to do the, the basic implementation, the basic testing, it's not enough. So this is how 
uh, basically it looks, you can do some uh, like uh, initial push testing here for the push notification. Uh, in Instagram, you'll get an uh, allow and uh, decline push notification when you do that. You can uh, click on push, you will see that the allow is actually being uh, pressed on. If you want to see all the service workers, you might have more than one, of course, in your uh, progressive, you go to, uh, on Chrome, you go to, a, to a, a URL called service worker internals. You will see all the lists that are running, all the list of uh, progressive web application service workers that are currently running uh, on your browser. And you can start engaging with them. You can get logs, you can stop and start, okay? You can access that uh, URL from here. So definitely Chrome has done a good, good amount of work to support the progressive web uh, early days, early implementation, and you can use that uh, out of the box. So that's just in a nutshell, you know, the manifest and the service worker. But the reality, because it's just new, there are a lot of bugs, okay? I, I, I didn't want to put too many bugs, uh, but, you know, Instagram, I reported the bug. I think that they just fixed it two days ago because two days ago the bug was still there. Uh, so uh, there was a layout bug. We talked about responsive. When you add to iOS uh, the progressive web application, two things happen. One, when you click on changing the language for, from English to a different language, uh, the entire layout is messed up. You see the truncation. You see that everything is like shifting. That's not working well on iOS. Second, the, and that's a, a common thing across all uh, progressive web applications, working with third-party logins. Most of the, the web applications today have some kind of an integration, either to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, or other third party, uh, preserving the credentials, uh, whether I'm doing it uh, using Face ID or just use a password, simply doesn't work, okay? Each time I'm logging into Instagram on my iOS device uh, for the progressive web, it, lo it, it loses my, my, my entire credentials. I need to do it over and over again. Obviously, I'm not using that. Okay, it's, 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 a, it's a nightmare. So if you look at my device, I still have the native Instagram and still the progressive, but that's an example uh, on Instagram. This is Tinder. Tinder, when you uh, flip from landscape to portrait, again, it's not really responsive. Um, it should be, but it's not. So that's another layout UI bug, okay? So you talk about some uh, third-party login issues. We're talking about uh, I will soon show you some uh, sensors, uh, backward and uh, miscompatibilities, as well as layout and UI issues. So I'll just go in, in a second, a uh, few seconds again about the Progressive Web App uh, Foundation or the architecture. The architecture consists of two things. One of them is the manifest. The other one is the service worker. It's the uh, JavaScript code that manages the entire core of your application. Um, you can work with your developers, you can work with the internal tools later on to see that it works fine as implemented, but that's the basic for you to get started with implementing a progressive website. The installation process is unique between iOS and Android, okay? If you do it today on your Android and your iOS an installation of a progressive website, let's take Instagram as an example, for Android it's going to be an APK installed on your device, uh, and a Chromium-based APK. It's not a traditional APK. It has a weird uh, name that is being given. Uh, and on iOS, it's actually not an IPA at all. It's a subset of Safari with advanced permissions to sensors and other stuff. So you can think about some kind of a hybrid uh, type of application. But again, it's not an IPA. And that's where the challenges begin, OK? Why is, th why is that a challenge? We're talking about web across mobile and desktop, okay? You're starting to, uh, how, how do you test your uh, responsive web today? Using Selenium, okay? When you move from Selenium to a mobile device and you want to test some kind of a native application, Selenium cannot interact with the, the home screen of a mobile phone, especially not with native applications. This is where Appium, right, comes into play. You need Appium, Dan Kula is here with us, thank you. So you need Appium to launch the, the application, but this is not really an application. And so today, that's what I'm, uh, maybe I'm pitching it to you, Dan, and, and the community. There is a gap today uh, to launch progressive web shortcuts from a mobile phone. And this is breaking the entire 
testing activities because you started on a desktop web. You then, the flow is, I go to Tinder.com or Instagram.com. I then go uh, from my mobile device. I add it to my, show, to my home screen. I then want to launch it. So it will launch in Safari or on Chrome if I'm running on Android. I cannot continue my flow. I cannot run it on a mobile device because I'm blocked to launch this shortcut. Once I I'm able to launch the PWA on my mobile device, everything is more or less okay. Still, there are push notifications, there are native objects from the mobile implementation of the progressive that Selenium can still not interact with, but then you do have Appium, you have XCY test, uh, and Espresso that more or less should be fine. So today, uh, basically, you have Selenium plus Appium or XUI test and Espresso. You, you bridge actually two different, they're closed by nature, but you bridge two different test framework to test one single application across desktop and web. And that's a unique thing in the market today, and you have no choice. So that's something that you need to, to know. Just to summarize, Two different types of installations. One is a shortcut of a Safari, subset of Safari browser on an iOS versus an APK on Android. Launching it is a challenge. Okay, so you need to take uh, this into account. I will show you how uh, within Perfecto we, we solved it. It's a temporary solution, but uh, we we'll probably uh, can work with the community and see how we can actually make it a generic solution for the entire uh, Appium community. But life isn't easy. Uh, this is iOS versus, versus Android. Uh, iOS today uh, has different limitations uh, with regards to PWA. I won't go through every uh, line here, but from a storage perspective, offline storage, browser-based on Safari, it's less than 50 megabytes, okay? Android is much more generous, 6% uh, of your available storage. So if you have a, a heavy implementation of your progressive website, you need to consider these differences. You have different limitations across Android and iOS. It's not the same. In addition, if you work with advanced sensors like audio, okay, this is, uh, if you go to pwarocks.com, you can see a bunch of progressive websites. This is the voice memos. If you run it uh, today on iOS 11.4, latest, uh, on an iPhone, you'll get this generous uh, message that uh, it's not supported, okay, there is no way from, uh, for a progressive to access the, the audio and record, uh, take a, vo a voice memo, it works fine on Android, okay? So this is an, uh, another thing from a voice support perspective. Payment systems as well. Payment is not supported through PWA. On iOS, it's supported on Android. Android started a bit with Google, supporting that behind, started a bit earlier. Apple is catching up and it should be closed uh, in, in the next couple of months. Edge with Microsoft are also making huge amount of uh, investments to make Progressive in line with all the other browsers as well, and I think they're uh, on the right track. Let's move to test strategy. So this is for responsive. Everyone is doing responsive, so I'm not uh, in reinventing the wheel for you guys. Uh, I see for responsive web testing six key pillars, okay? Everyone is using Selenium, it's fine. That's where we are today in Selenium conference. For that, you need to have the right platforms. You, you, you build a Selenium grid, you have different devices, different screen sizes, different screen resolution. This is how you build the lab. This is one pillar of your test plan for responsive, right? N then you have the visual. I've shown you how Tinder looks like when you do from landscape to portrait. We have applicators showing their visual uh, testing. Visual for responsive is very important. That's the second pillar for success in responsive web testing. Obviously, the website needs to work, so that's the, the different navigation flows from one website, from one page to the other. And we see a lot of redirects. We see that from one responsive website, you move to a different site which is not responsive and breaks the entire user experience. Ne functionality testing of navigation for responsive is key for success. It's, it's the third key here. Client-side performance testing. You are loading a lot of objects and I, I'm not sure if I have the slide next uh, to that, but you're loading, loading in the responsive website a lot of objects which are match, which should match the device screen size and resolution. Let's assume you're running on an Android, uh, I don't know, small screen size. You will probably only want to load the re relevant images that fit and respond to that screen size in opposed to a large desktop, right? That's the different layouts that you use. If you load the full set of objects, per each device, per each screen size and resolution, you're 
harming the performance. That's from a client side. Obviously, you have the entire load testing that you need to take care of for web. That's not new. Accessibility. Accessibility is something that people hate to talk about. Uh, I know that Manoj, if he's here, uh, Manoj is talking a lot about doing accessibility testing for web uh, with Wave, with uh, AXC. There are other tools that are uh, you, that are used, accessibility, I think, soon to become very uh, much, uh, I would say, mandatory for all web developers. So accessibility for responsive isn't different. You need to take care of it also for the, from the mobile side, not just from the desktop web. It's responsive. So accessibility is the fifth pillar. And then you have the test environment conditions. Responsive on web is one thing, but responsive on mobile, when you are traveling, you are roaming, uh, I have with me a colleague here, Wim, who is uh, from Netherlands, Tele2, is, is challenged with roaming, and I don't know if it's a responsive, it's a responsive, I guess. So testing network conditions, testing environments is definitely a key, is the sixth key. That's easy peasy, right? That's just responsive web. So I have another six. That's, that's, that's for progressive. If you want to test progressive on top of responsive, you need to make sure that the manifest itself makes sense, okay? And the manifest has different parameters, different capabilities, like uh, launching on standalone versus in the browser, different layouts, different themes, colors, icons. You need to make sure that the manifest is matching uh, the user experience when you work on different devices and different platforms. Validate the service workers. That's mo one of the most important things. Moving from offline to online, uh, registering to push notification, uh, working with the sensors that I talked to, to you about. Okay, so these two lines, these are very unique to progressive, but still you have also the additional capabilities. This is the third pa uh, part, validate PWA specific capabilities. What does it mean? I showed you the, the audio, right? Audio, image injection, voice injection, offline things. These are specific scenarios that are only relevant to progressive and only relevant on the mobile phone. Okay, so you need to extend your responsive test plan and add the unique capabilities that you will get from uh, the progressive web implementation. So that's the third thing. Test across platforms, inheriting for responsive, but still, this is different. This is, I'm not repeating myself from previous slide. This is different because iOS and Android, you remember the table, behaves differently. So it's not just testing a smartphone on iOS and a smartphone on Android. You need to take into account the different limitations, like. Uh, offline caching storage limitation, 50 megas versus 6%, and more, more, uh, more sensor-related stuff, payment versus not payment, no payment support. So properly test across platforms with, with regards to uh, progressive. Test automation and object strategy. I talked to you about uh, thinking outside of your Selenium head, taking Selenium plus Appium plus maybe some visual tools, and you, you start to combine for one single application a bunch of test frameworks, okay? And you only have one JavaScript source code to test, but you need multiple test frameworks in that regards to have full test automation coverage. Google's PWA checklist, okay? I, I gave Google a, head, a heads up here, uh, and uh, I think they are, I would say, in front of the market today from thought leadership, from documentation, from tools that allow you to start, to get started with Progressive, they have some push notification tools that you can use to test the push notification uh, reg registry uh, in Progressive and many more. So uh, I will run uh, a bit faster here because some of the things I showed, showed you, this is how um, uh, a, manifest and, uh, a manifest test would look like uh, in, in, the, in the inspector, in the Google Lighthouse tool. Google Lighthouse, this is where you will get the, the access to this uh, manifest and service worker testing. You can see here uh, some of the parameters uh, that you can test, whether it's standalone versus uh, uh, this is the standalone implementation. This is how it looks like. On the right hand, this is a standalone display covering the full screen. The progressive will cover the full screen like a native application. On the left hand, it will be a browser-based ba user experience. So it will be the same content, but display within a browser UI. So you want to actually make sure that you test for both. It's a simple configuration change in the manifest JSON file, and you will see that it reflects and looks correct. Uh, the, your end user won't do it, right? But if you want to uh, support both, you want to make sure that both work, and you can do it very easily with Lighthouse. This is the service workers. I talked to you about it. This is the Twitter light, how it looks like. 
you have full access to the JavaScript source code. You can test push notifications from here. You can uh, analyze the, the code and uh, get logs from what's going on within the Google Lighthouse and the service internals, Chrome, that I showed you in the beginning. So tools are there. That's more uh, like URL, so I don't need to remember. I put it in, in, in context. This is how it looks like. Uh, you go to Chrome Inspect Service Workers, Chrome Service Worker Internals, and you can start engaging, stop, inspect, unregister a service worker uh, in a PWA application exactly from your Chrome browser. You don't need to write any code here. You can start doing it automatically from the browser itself. This is the specific capabilities of PWA, right? Google Maps also, it's a PWA uh, application, so it means that it works with GPS, it works with location sensors, okay? You need to make sure that th these are working fine uh, across all platforms, Android and iOS. So this is just zooming in into a mobile specific capability that was inherited by Google on their Google Maps progressive web, uh, web application, okay? So just think about web and mobile combined together, and the test cases are actually growing in that regard. Automation is key here. This is one of the push notifications that you get, uh, allowing you to uh, access uh, location, uh, the, the permission form. This is the uh, traditional responsive web in, in, one, in one slide. So taking care of the UI, this is not, this doesn't change. If you have a responsive and you implemented a progressive, Everything stays. You have the same test plan for responsive that you carry, continue to carry on. It means UI and layout testing, performance, network-related testing, especially on the mobile front, functionality of the flows, differences between browsers, launching responsive from not just from the browser. You can launch today responsive uh, from a link within Facebook, right? It's a different browser implementation. You also want to take some kind of a testing approach into that use case scenario. It's very common today. Uh, LinkedIn, when you go from LinkedIn and you cl click on a link which is a responsive web, you'll see it from the LinkedIn browser, right? It's a, it's a different uh, UI, it's a different uh, approach, and you need to also do some kind of testing in that regard. Objects. So this is an example of, uh, I think, smaller peaks or something. That's a PWA application. And what uh, our R&D Imperfecto did, and this is what We'll try to work with the community and see if we can uh, do a merge. We can push it to the community. Uh, we implemented, because we couldn't launch using Appium, the PWA shortcut on the mobile device. This is done right now only for iOS. But we implemented a new command, you know, called mobile.pwa start and stop. And this enables us to bridge between the Selenium test back to the mobile device after launching the shortcut on the iOS device, OK? Without that, we couldn't uh, actually do automation uh, in, a, in one flow, okay? Um, you can think about uh, using web, uh, sorry, visual object as well to launch and just do a click based on OCR or stuff on the icon instead of using Appium and then go back to your Selenium coding, which will also work, okay? But if you want to do uh, coding, you know, uh, in Appium and stuff, uh, continue your Selenium scripts as well. You just want to have mobile PWA start, which gets the application name uh, and uh, smaller peaks in that regard, and uh, it will work fine. Uh, again, we'll see how we can push this uh, to the entire Appium community so everyone who is marching towards PWA can leverage that. It's not a big uh, change, but it's, uh, it's an, an important one. And that's how it works. Uh, that's, uh, I have a sample project in uh, Appium that if someone is interested, I can share with you end-to-end. Uh, -end. It's uh, for Flipboard, flipboard.com, but with this implementation already it works. Um, if, if someone is interested, I have it installed on my IntelliJ. I can actually show you. Um, I will step forward from that, uh, from that point. Uh, so just to summarize the previous point, Selenium plus Appium, maybe some visual testing as well. This is what it takes today to do test automation of progressive web. And you have these six plus six buckets that I'm recommending. Take the responsive buckets that most of you I'm almost sure are familiar with, add to them the unique things that progressive is bringing to the table, and you have a new test plan which is uh, suitable for the future. Um, 
I want to give us the sixth element here before I'm wrapping up, the checklist from Lighthouse. You go to Google, developers.google.com, progressive web app checklist. This is a good uh, first step for you if you build a test plan for progressive and you, you want to ignore all the bullshit that I talked about. You start from here. They will give you a list of things to consider and some recommendations on where to look and what to look for, both from security, which is important, and a concern for, for many enterprises today, especially l large banks who are marching from native to progressive. They are concerned about uh, security in the web, marching from web to mobile, so it's, it's a concern. Google actually addresses security as well here. Accessibility, testing service workers, testing manifest files, you know, and all these uh, uh, extensions for Lighthouse that you can uh, start working with. So I strongly recommend look at that as well. Summary. So progressive web application today is growing. I mentioned brands that almost anyone here is familiar with, Tinder, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, eBay, Flipboard, the list goes on and on. Everyone understands the benefits of adding native mobile capabilities to web, even though the, the maturity between the different mobile implementations and the browsers on iOS and Android are different. It's the gap are uh, getting close. I don't know what are the plans in iOS 12 with the, the new Safari and the new uh, operating system implementation. I'm sure that we will see more advanced capabilities coming and closing gaps in Progressive as well. Uh, there is a, a large uh, community and large uh, Threads that I'm reading all the, all the time in medium.com just on iOS 11.x with Progressive. I recommend for you to subscribe to that chat and uh, stay, stay in touch with what's going on there. It's very uh, live and uh, kicking. Uh, Selenium visual testing and Appium. That's my strategy. Uh, so that's the huge change here. Uh, if up until today, responsive could have been uh, completed, you know, test automation could be completed only through Selenium plus some manual testing. Today you need to think about the mobile extensions of Progressive, and this is where Appium and maybe some other visual tools that are unique to mobile will uh, provide you the added, the added value that you are missing today. Again, leverage what, what you know today. It's still Selenium, it's still Java, JavaScript, so continue leveraging what you know today, but think outside of the box, think more about user experience, Offline scenarios, network, push notification, try to bridge mobile and web techniques into one. With that, I would like to thank you uh, for uh, being here. And if we have time, I hope we have time for some questions. I'm ready to accept them. <laughs>